Here, Uncle Randolph, let me. No. Press will get it for me. <laughs> Second press. It's a fine thing when you trust your lawyer more than your own niece and nephew. know any good jokes, we could probably end this right now. Behave yourself, brother dear. <sighs> Olivia. Bernie. The name is Bernard, Uncle Randolph. You want my money, don't you? Get your keisters over here. Here we are. Oh, I've got eyes, girl. <sighs> You're your father's kid, all right. The drama queen he was, and God rest his soul. You know exactly how much money I've got, right? 3.24 billion in cash and liquid assets. I expected you'd know it right down to the last penny. Is there anything that we might do to ease your suffering? I guess there is, girl. Come closer, both of you. I'm not going to leave you one thin dime. <laughs> Come with me. What's this nonsense about our not getting any inheritance? We're his last living relatives. Who else could he give it to? His only other living relative. Who? Who? You both know about Mr. St. John's only son dying in a car accident 12 years ago. Of course we know about that. Cut to the chase. Even though he hadn't spoken with his father in over a year, he still was sole beneficiary to Randolph St. John's estate. Until the accident, of course. All right. Forget the chase. Cut to the credits. Patience, Bernard. Go on, Mr. Preston. Well, it seems the young man left behind a widow and a young son who Mr. St. John had never seen. Edward, I believe, was the child's name. I heard the baby had died. There's no death records for an infant named Edward St. John. He's out there somewhere. And I've hired a private investigator to find him. Let's see, by now he should be about 12 years old. In the meantime, we're supposed to cool our heels and wait? This search of yours could take months, years. You'll be pleased to know that Mr. St. John has given me until his passing away to find little Edward. Who knows, you may be lucky yet. However, with the computer-assisted tracking, we're likely to find the boy by this time next week. Or maybe even sooner. At which time, all of this goes to him. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Immensely. You might think about packing your things now. Avoid the rush. <laughs> I knew this would come back to haunt us one day. You were supposed to take care of that little brat. I cut the brake lines to the car. Keep your voice down. I arranged the accident. How could I have known his wife would suspect foul play and go into hiding? She knew we'd come after that baby. What's done is done. We need to do some damage control. If that investigator finds that little brat, we're done for. Perhaps not, brother. Accidents happen all the time. You could say that they run in the family. <laughs> Dear sister, I love the way you think.
Horizons Orphanage has been around for 65 years. <laughs> We've placed over a thousand children. Oh, and isn't it a lovely atmosphere? The children love to come around the fountain. Of course, they all know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're just beautiful. It's so nice you've taken an interest in one of our older kids. Normally, people only want the babies. William and I have discussed this at length, and we both agree that this is the way to go. Haven't we, William? <laughs> yes, dear. None of this 2 a.m. feeding and diaper-changing nonsense for us. <laughs> Isn't that right, dear? Yes, dear. Then I have just the young man for you. He's one of our best and very clever. His name is Edward. He's quite advanced for his years. you call a problem child, is he? Judge for yourself. Eddie! It's Miss Mason! Come on in. After you. No, Edward, I'm your mommy. makes four sets of prospective parents that you've scared off in the past six months. Yep, four for four. Why can't you direct your intelligence in other more constructive ways? One would think you don't want to be adopted. I don't. I'm waiting for my mom. She's coming back for me. I know she will. Eddie, it's been 12 years since your mother dropped you off here. We haven't heard one word from her in, in all that time. I don't care. She's coming back for me. Eddie, you can't stay here forever. Now that you're 12, there are a new set of state guidelines to follow. You've had four chances at adoption, and the government requires that we place you in foster care. Foster care? No way, please! And after that, you'll have to go to the youth farm until you're 18. But I want to stay here. My hands are tied. It's the law. I wish things could have been better for you. I really am sorry, Eddie. Me too. Hold that. Josh, hand me that test tube. Ah, <laughs> finally. Carl, Josh, dinner. After all these weeks, after all this trial and error, it's ready. 
You want to try it first? Uh, go ahead. You first. You sure? Guys, second time I've called you for dinner. Honey. Honey, we have done it. We've created the ultimate vitamin drink you only have to take once a month. It's time released, you see. Guaranteed to give you a daily kick in the pants. Care for a sip? Oh, gee, you know, after what happened the last time I accidentally drank one of your experiments, I, I don't think so. Well, they say in school that if something tastes bad, it has to be good for you. This stuff must be a wonder worker. Come on, boys. Dinner's ready. In business news, billionaire industrialist Randolph St. John still clings to life in the desperate hope of being reunited with the grandson he's never known. Albert Preston, the St. John family attorney, has been charged with the task of locating the young man who would now be 12 years old. Anyone with any information is asked to contact Mr. Preston. However, proof will be required if you want to get rich off this little guy. In other news, please for clemency continue for convicted I can... Stop loving you, Eddie. Just hope I can get to you before your cousins do. I tell you, I can't wait to get that formula down to the lab on Monday morning. The directors at Applied Technology are going to flip their lights once I get the bugs worked out naturally. Hmm. Josh, eat your food. Don't play with it. Excuse me? Hello? Mrs. Griffin. This is Deborah Mason at the New Horizons Orphanage. Have you got a moment? Oh, Miss Mason, hi. Well, actually, we were just sitting down to dinner, but sure, I have a couple of seconds. Uh, is, is this about another foster child? Yes. Your family did such a wonderful job. With the last two young people that I placed in your care that... I was wondering, would you be so inclined to take on a new foster child? Oh, well... His name is Eddie Brown, and this orphanage is the only home he's ever had. I know that your family could give him the love and attention he needs to make the proper adjustments. Would you be interested? Um, well, I'd, I'd have to discuss it with my family. You know, we had such a good time with those other two kids. I'm so glad they found a good home. I know you'll have as good a time with Eddie. He's 12 years old and, and very bright. I think he'd make an excellent little companion for Josh. Well, we'll talk about it tonight, and I'll call you in the morning. That'll be fine. Looking forward to hearing from you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Was that Miss Mason from the orphanage? We haven't heard from her in a while. Yeah. She has another foster child for us. A 12-year-old boy. Is he going to stay with us? How do you feel about that, honey? 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 Mom, it's okay, really. I... Oh, oh, okay, now, now, just breathe deep, Laura. All right, come on, breathe with me. Come on. That's better. Sit down. You know, at least it doesn't happen as often as it used to. It's been two years. The invisibility formula should have been out of your system long before now. But none of the tests that I've run on you can explain it. It's okay, honey. You know, as long as I just don't get too excited and I do my meditating and my yoga, I'll, I'll be fine. Maybe we should... Tell Miss Mason to find another foster family for this boy. No, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want this to get in the way of helping that boy. Are you sure, Laura? Yeah, let's do it. Um, Josh, what do you think? Well, it's cool with me if it's cool with everybody else. Good. I'll call her first thing in the morning. <laughs> Very sorry, but he did go peacefully in his sleep, if that's any consolation. Oh, I know you did your best, Doctor. Oh, yes, thank you for coming out on such a gloomy night. 
I'll send you my bill. Yes, please do. <laughs> well, Rich! <laughs> no more Liddy. Get me my pill. No more Bernie. Prop my pillow. No <laughs> more oh, oh, Rich. Drowning in a sea of cash. Summers in Madrid. Winters in the south of France. Thanks to Uncle Randall. <laughs> the crotchety old coot. <laughs> I thought he'd never kick the bucket. You might want to wait to dance on his grave until it's actually been dug. Who let you in? The doctor, as he was leaving. What do you want, Preston? This. <gasps> oh, no. It's not possible. Sorry to be a spoil sport, but there he is, Edward Brown, or should I say Edward St. John, the sole heir to the family fortune. His mother must have changed his name in fear that something bad might happen to him if his true identity or whereabouts were known. Imagine that. <laughs> Where is he? Not far. He could be here as early as tomorrow. But you arrived too late. Under the conditions of the will, you had to find him before the old codge before Uncle Randolph passed away. So you're a day late and a dollar short, Preston, old buddy. Oh, I may have arrived here after the fact, but the boy was located earlier this evening. Just in time, as a matter of fact. Once again, sorry. The boy will be here tomorrow. And as executor of the estate, I'll be making sure that his transition here is a smooth one, which means having the two of you packed and out of here by noon tomorrow, which shouldn't be too difficult, considering all you have are the clothes on your back. Sleep well. Oh, Mr. Preston. Yes? Didn't you say that you were going to look after the boy's care? That's right. But aren't we his only living relatives? And if we petitioned the court, wouldn't they grant us sole custody of the child? And wouldn't they wonder why you had shut us out? Perhaps to control the family fortune for yourself. You are sly devils, I'll give you that. <laughs> All right, you've won for now. But I'm not letting this rest. Such diligence. Ever the consummate professional. Now get out and draw up those adoption papers. We must do this quick. We must get rid of the little brat with one very convenient... But very natural looking. Accident. <laughs> Don't boys always climb trees and then fall out of them? Yes, or stick their fingers into light sockets. Or trip over staircase railings. Yes, leaving us as the sole owners of the estate. Welcome to the family, little Edward. Hmm. Too bad you're not going to survive the experience. Mm. This is it. Come on, I'll introduce you to the Griffins. Oh, Miss Mason, hi. Hi, it was wonderful getting your call this morning. This is Eddie Brown. I've told him all about you and your family. Oh, terrific. Hi, Eddie. Nice to meet you. A pleasure to meet you, too, Miss Griffin. Well, very well-mannered young man. Mm -hmm. Josh, Carl? What do you think, Eddie? It's a cool house. <laughs> Guys, this is Eddie Brown. What are there, pal? I'm Carl Griffin. And this is our son, Josh. Hey, dude. Hey. Well, it looks like it's time for me to let you all get acquainted. You okay with everything? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll be checking in every now and again to see how things are going. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. <sighs> so, Eddie, you're going to be sharing a room with Josh. You want to show it to him? Yeah, sure. Come on. Hey, you like Death Race comics? Yeah, they're cool. Cool. I got every issue. You want to see it? Sure. 
Oh, I think this is gonna work out just fine. <laughs> All right, now this up here is my room. It's yes. on the second floor, that's awesome. Yeah, man, it is the second floor. So you like horror movies? Heck yeah. Have you ever seen Lizard Brides from Saturn? Never heard of it. It's like the coolest of the all-time horror flicks. They show it sometimes on the weekends. Well, maybe I can get my mom to take us to the Owen Ray Theater this weekend. Hey, check this out. Play slime! My mom told me that if she ever caught me with this stuff again, she'd crown me for a week. Well, if parents hate it, we gotta love it. Yeah, I can tell you and I are gonna get along just fine. But there is something I ought to tell you. Weird things happen here sometimes. Weird things? Like what? Well, like sometimes when my mom gets a little stressed and her blood pressure goes up, she turns invisible. Invisible? No way. Big way. You see, my dad's a scientist, and it all started when he invented this invisibility formula. Yes. Looks good, huh, Cosmo? You want to help Daddy with an, an invention? First, he tested it on the dog. That's right, Cosmo. And then I tested on my friend's iguana because I wanted to use the formula to sneak out of the house when I was grounded. And then I wanted to use the formula later, so I hid it in a soda bottle. Then my mom found the soda bottle. Well, you can guess what happened next. My dad invented an antidote and she returned to normal. Well, it's pretty normal anyway. But it doesn't happen as often as it used to. She just fades in and out every now and then. Hey, is there any more of that stuff hanging around? Nope. Government came and took it, and that was that. We could have had some major fun with that stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, he seems like a nice kid. Yeah, he and Josh have sure hit it off. I think he's going to be a good friend for him. Years in the orphanage. Must have been so hard on him. Just want to make it up to him, you know? I told you lately how much I love you. Better be careful talking of a woman like that. It could get you into more trouble than you bargained for. Mrs. Griffin, I thrive on trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you just remember that till I get back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say goodnight to the boys. Hurry. <laughs> okay, guys. The time. Cute. So, um, Eddie, I'm never going to take the place of your real mom. I'm not even going to try. Just want you to know you have a home here for as long as you want it. I like you here, Miss Griffin. You guys are so cool. Yeah, well, you're pretty cool yourself, kiddo. But I, I think we better take this off to go to sleep. What do you say? Okay, bedtime, both of you. Just because it's summer vacation, there's still plenty to do around here. Night. Mwah. Night, Mom. Night. Oh, there you are. 
I need you to show me how to work the sound effect system. I can't go through with it, Olivia. I can't send this poor child to a cold, early grave. Goodbye, dear sister. Half a job, didn't I? Save the comedy for later. I want you to tell me how to operate this wretched machine. Oh. Are we expecting anyone? Well, shut up and answer the door. Yavol, I'm Commandant. Oh! Uh, I was walking my dog, Lester, and we heard screams. Is everything all right? Oh, that we were rehearsing. Oh, really? <laughs> Uh, rehearsing for what? A scene. A scene we're doing for Uncle's funeral tomorrow. Yes, he was such a fan of the theater that we thought we would share a scene from his favorite play with the attendees. Uh, yeah. And uh, what play would that be? What play? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, George Bernard Shaw's. Bernard. George Bernard Shaw's. Man and Superman. I don't remember that play having any screaming in it. Well, this is the modern version. Now, if you'll excuse us. Well, we I have a lot of I work to do. Oh, dog, take your dog with you, huh? Good night now. Oh, well, I don't know about you, Lester, but I think those people are downright weird. Man and Superman. Why didn't you say Macbeth? At least they scream in Macbeth. How would you know? You're illiterate. I am not. Mommy and Daddy were married. I think they're up to something. We'd better keep a close eye on them. Okay, if we put the soap on now and let them dry, they'll wash themselves right after the meal. I'm not too sure about this. Oh, trust me. All my inventions work, okay? Now, let's put them back. All right. You've been out in the lab all morning. Anything come of it? I've been going over the blood samples we've taken from you since you drank the formula. The potency of the invisibility potion appears to be lessening. I think one day soon you'll be back to 100% normal. Honey, what did you put? What is this meal? Josh! Eddie! Boys! Get down here this minute! Somebody's got some explaining to do. Told you you should have put so many dishes. How was I supposed to know? Get this stink, how Josh is gonna kill me. This will do the job. It's ripping it. Oh great, oh no. Whoa, that's a big that's a big hole. Oh jeez, he's gonna be Well, you can look at it this way, it'll be cooler in the summer. Not exactly one of your brightest ideas, Eddie. 
I can't do anything right. You guys have been so cruel to me. I mean, all I want to do is help out. Nobody at the orphanage treated me like you guys do. Yeah, I can imagine. I did a day at New Horizons Orphanage myself. Right after my mom drank the invisibility formula, the state stuck me in there until we could work some things out. Really? Then you know what it was like. I mean, sometimes it was okay, but it was really fun messing with the dweebs that tried to adopt me. You don't want to get adopted? No, because my mom's going to pick me up. I know it. And what was she like? I don't really know. She left me when I was really young, but I do have a picture. She's pretty? Yeah. So, why did she leave you there? Well, Miss Mason said it's because she couldn't take care of me. Maybe I messed things up even then. Hey, man, you're just trying to do the right thing. That's all that counts. Well, I'm sorry about messing up your jacket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's cool. I never really liked it anyway. You want to play some cocaine? Okay? Oh, sure. inside. Mom, Dad, it's Mrs. Mason. Is anything wrong? These people are Olivia and Bernard St. John. Bernard. Bernard. And they're Eddie's last living relatives. They've come to take Eddie home. I didn't know I had any living relatives. We were unaware of your existence until we saw this newspaper article. St. John? As in St. John Industries? The very same, sir. You've heard of us? <laughs> well, I'm Carl Griffin, project director for Applied Technology, one of St. John Industries subsidiaries. Oh, so you work for us. Small world, isn't it? And you are? Laura Griffin. I'm Carl's wife and Josh's mother. Well, uh, would you like to sit down? Uh, have some coffee and talk. Have you any tea? I think we could round some up. Well, that would be lovely. Well, I, I think that I'd better get back to the office. You call me if you need me. Yeah, we'll be in touch. admire a woman who remains a housewife. It's so, um, retro. Master Edward is the sole heir to our late uncle's fortune. We've come forward to shepherd him through the difficult days that no doubt will lie ahead. Sole heir? Does that mean I'm rich? I'm rich! Oh, yeah! yeah. Edward! Edward will come and live with us at the Manor Estate, and we'll be one big happy family. But I don't want to go. I want to stay here with the Griffins. No, that's quite impossible. We're family now, and that's that. You know, this has been a pretty big shock to all of us, especially Eddie. Maybe if he could just ease into this gradually, spend a couple of nights a week here. That is out of the question. If we'd known about his existence sooner, he would never have stayed here in the first place. Well, I find it pretty interesting that you just couldn't find him until after he was rich. <laughs> Sugar. Nervous. Oh, great. What a perfect time to turn invisible. Pack your things, Edward. It's time to leave. But I like it here. We're a family. We belong together. There's nothing more to discuss. Uh. Oh, <laughs> 
doctor before thinking about adopting a boy. I am fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, you twit. Hey, maybe Josh could spend the night with me tonight at my new place. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Actually, uh, we want to spend some time with our newfound cousin uh, to get to know him. You understand? So, what did I miss? Nothing. Get your things, Edward. We are leaving. Anyone who tries to stop us will be hearing from our attorney. I'm sorry, Eddie. There's nothing we can do. We have no choice. Josh, would you help me pack? Come on, scout. Yeah. Do you need something to clean off with? Thank you, no. I love you, Eddie. No matter what, we'll always be here for you, okay? I know, Miss Griffin. Oh, can you give him the address so Josh can write to me? Thank you for taking such good care of our dear little cousin. And we know you'll do the same. But of course, dear lady, you have no idea how much he means to us. Josh, come out and say goodbye. We already said our goodbyes, Mr. Griffin. That's okay. Come along, Edward. We're going to have such fun together. I suppose this is for the best. You don't believe that any more than I do. They get so testy when they have to wait. This will be one of your chores. Cool. But don't fall in. <laughs> Our late uncle was a bit eccentric. Talk about the slime calling Algae Green. Excuse me? Oh, I was just wondering where my new room was. Right this way. is yours. I am so excited. And this will be your room. Could I, like, 
drinks tea with you guys tonight? <laughs> Such a sense of humor you have. I think you'll find enough to occupy yourself. But with the ghosts and all. Ghosts? Now, don't frighten him, Bernard. Pay him no mind. This house isn't really haunted. Or at least we don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep tight, cousin Edward. See you in the morning. Open the door! It's for your own protection, Edward. We wouldn't want you sleepwalking, falling down and hurting yourself now, would we? Off to bed now. What are you looking at? Falling down and hurting yourself. <laughs> you slay me. Well, not until we're ready for it. Nasty little accident, at least. We have to act quickly. Is everything prepared on your end? Perfectly. Operation Scared to Death can start at any time. If this works, he'll fall over the railing and break his little neck on the foyer floor. The sooner we dispose of the little nuisance, the sooner we'll have everything we ever wanted. I'll lock the main door. And I'll go get ready for tonight's festivities. <laughs> Nobody's seen any flying saucers tonight. Give my regards to Elvis, you nutcase. Jeez, I hate the full moon. You're not really gonna send a unit out there, are you? Nah, I was just saying that. We do things a little differently out here than you did down at the 9th Precinct. You shine these rich folks on and they forget they ever called you. Which is exactly what caused me to come down here to lodge my complaint in person. Ma'am, would you like a seat? No, thank you, officer. Shining on the rich folks, huh? Uh, Ma'am, that's not what I meant. Well, what's your complaint? There's some very strange behavior going on down at the St. John Estate in the Diamond Hills Development. What sort of strange behavior? I've heard screams and moans. Probably kids just goofing around. Oh, no, officer. These are very serious screams. I tell you, there is something awful going on in that house. I, I went to investigate, and they told me that they were only rehearsing for a play. Well, that doesn't sound so nefarious, unless they were really bad actors. Did I happen to mention that my husband and I donate huge sums of money to the Policeman's Retirement Fund every year? Uh, no, ma'am. Ma'am, we'll send someone out there and investigate right away. I hope so, because I'm going to be watching. Good evening, gentlemen. <sighs> Your first day in the precinct, and you've already schmoozed the richest crackpot in town. Good going, kid. Yeah, but I wouldn't schmooze him. Get your coat. We're going to check it out. Josh. I think he's still sulking about Eddie. Oh, no. Two of them bonded so quickly. I feel badly for him. I'll go talk to Josh. Maybe I can get him to come down. Josh. 
gosh. He's gone. Gone? Oh, you don't suppose... He sneaked off to go with Eddie. How could we have missed him? He's a clever kid. Must have gotten it from your side of the family. Well, we have to go out. Oh, oh, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. You stay here in case he calls or comes back. I've got the address they gave us. It's up in the Diamond Hills development. Be right back. <sighs> Joshua Martin Griffin. You get back here, you're grounded till you're on Social Security. <laughs> No, sir. The young man has been found. No, he's not an imposter. We've confirmed his identity. Sir, may I be blunt? You sound to be, oh, about 30. Yes? Well, the real Edward St. John II is 12. It was in all the reports. Therefore, you can't be him. Listen closer next time. Parasites. Come in. Uh, hi, Mr. Preston. Do we have an appointment? Well, no, not exactly. But I think you may be looking for me. <sighs> Madam, it has been a most tiring day, so let's dispense with the pleasantries. Edward St. John II has been found. You are the wrong age, and frankly, the wrong gender to be him. But. I do admire your chutzpah. Now, if you'll excuse me. I'm his mother. Nice comeback, but I'm not buying it. Unless you have some proof. This isn't proof. This infant could be anybody. I knew I should have gone to the orphanage first. Orphanage? What orphanage? New Horizons, where I left him 12 years ago. And you left him under the name of? Eddie Brown. Brown being my maiden name. Mrs. St. John, I am so sorry to be so rude. Please sit down. Sit down. You have to understand a story like this it brings every gold digger in town out. You have to be careful. I understand now. Where's my son? Uh, regrettably, uh, I've drawn up adoption papers. Uh, his cousins, Bernard and Olivia, they've petitioned for custody. No. Those two are the reason I put him in hiding in the first place. If they get their hands on him, they'll kill him, the way they killed my husband. You can prove they murdered your husband? I don't have to prove it. I know it. We have to stop this before they get to him. Mrs. St. John, come with me. Thing. Let's just relax and hang out till morning. I don't know, Josh. Come on, it'll be fine. Night, Eddie. Night, Josh. I had no idea. These things were so uncomfortable. Ha <laughs> quit griping. It's well worth it. Remember, it has to look like an accident. Did anyone ever tell you you have a terrible habit of repeating yourself? <laughs> oh, don't be such a smart aleck. Oh. oh. And now, for my brilliant plan to come in. You mean our brilliant plan. Now, hurry up. 
You have two minutes to get into position. I'm going to unlock the little troll's door. Your imagination, Eddie. Go back to sleep. No, I'm serious. No, it's just your mind playing tricks on you. There's no such thing as ghosts. You were saying? Didn't I tell you? There's got to be a logical explanation for this. Yeah, it's haunted. There you are. Are you all right? Yeah, Mom, we're fine. You look, you gotta come get us. We're in trouble. You bet you are, mister. Your father's on his way over there right now. No, Mom, look. There, there's ghosts. They're real ghosts. One of them possessed a suit of armor and tried to kill us. Cute story. And you're still grounded. No, Mom, I'm serious. It's no joke, Miss Griffin. Oh, all right. I'll call the police. But if you're making this up... No, Mom, I'm not. I swear. All right, I'll call them now. Thanks, Mom. And, and Mom... What? I love you. I love you too, Josh. Stay there until the police get there. Okay, bye. Calvary's coming. Yeah, well, I hope they bring a couple of wooden stakes. Joshua Griffin. What a lovely surprise. How can you live in this place? It's haunted. Haunted? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why, whatever do you mean? We heard all these noises, and there's these pictures with eyes that move. You have a wonderful imagination. You'll have quite a career writing horror movies one day. But in the meanwhile, let's have some refreshments while I call your mother to come and collect you. This way, this way. Nine one one. Operator, I need you to send a unit over to the Randolph St. John estate. Two boys are in danger. What is the nature of the emergency? I just told you. Are they in imminent danger? I don't know. Something weird's going on over there. My son just called and said there were ghosts after him. Sure, lady. You almost had me there for a moment. <sighs> Blast it. <sighs> oh, great. a bad thing after all. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Well, I didn't think I'd be needing this old thing again. And to finish the ensemble. <laughs> Hold tight, Josh and Eddie. Mom's on her way. Okay, Laura. Just keep cool till you get there. Now, where is this place? Diamond Hills. Diamond Hills. Where are you? It's quite late. You two must be very tired. I know. 
How about if I make you a little toddy for the body? It's a drink. You do want one, don't you? Sure. sure. <laughs> Sit down. I'll be right back. You know, you're pretty clever sneaking out of the house without your parents finding out. I hope you won't get in too much trouble when they come to get you. I'm sure I'll be fine. But, you know, I really should be going. Nonsense. Here you go. What was that? Oh, just a little nutmeg. Now be careful, the cups are hot. Go on. Drink up. Drink up. <laughs> Drink. Um, you two stay here. Mr. Griffith, what a surprise. Uh, Griffin. I'm not gonna drink it. Me neither. Just like in the Spider Woman Strikes Back. But why is she trying to kill us? I can think of about a billion reasons. My inheritance! Exactly. Now that's book. I, uh, I'm very sorry to bother you, but I, I think my, my son Josh may be here. I beg your pardon. He's missing, you see, and he was so distraught over Eddie having to come here that he. Well, come inside. Well, Griffin, and what brings you by? He thinks his son might be here. Edward's little friend? Now, how would he have got in here? <laughs> Most likely he stowed away in your car. <laughs> uh, Bernard, uh, why don't uh, you uh, show him around and uh, <laughs> maybe the child will turn up? Ah, yes. I think I know where they might be. Come this way. Children. I hate children. That was my dad's voice. We gotta get out of here. They're gonna waste him too. Wait, hold on. We've got a match somewhere. What are you doing with matches? Hey. You don't like firecrackers with your tongue, you know. Here we go. This was Uncle's little playroom. He wasn't quite right, you know. Well, the boys don't seem to be down here. Maybe we should go back upstairs. Oh. Let's not say we did. Be quiet. Here he comes. There he is. Come out. Come out. Wherever you are. Bernard. Bernard. Come here. Boy, that was close. Come on. What did you do with him? He's in the dungeon. 
We'll dispose of them with the rest. No problem. I just gave the two little brats enough cyanide to knock out a white buffalo. Oh, well, that'll look really accidental. Of course it will. They got into the poison cabinet by mistake. It happens all the time. Hmm. Then we're rich. No, we have to dispose of the bodies. Now, come on, help me. They're gone. The best laid plans of mice and men. Oh, shut up and help me find them. How are we going to get dead out of that cellar? They're going to do away with all of us. Not if I can help it. Oh, no. Here we go again. Let's get out of here. Go. Oh. That was some serious commotion. You had to hear it. We got a little thing called probable cause to consider. So when do we take him in? When he come running out of the house with a bloody butcher knife? One false step and you'll be writing parking tickets in Pacoima. So what do we do now? Wake me when it gets interesting. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of this running and screaming stuff. This ain't like any horror movie I ever saw. Well, then you've never seen Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. You okay? I'm okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. What's this all about? Somebody just got out of it. I think it was a lady. She climbed those steps and disappeared. Disappeared? Hey, I swear, that's what happened. Uh-huh. You've been putting in a lot of late hours, haven't you, kid? Trying to make a good impression. Yeah, maybe you're right. Let's head for the barn, kid. This is a total bupkis run. Man, I'm too young to be seeing things. those little heathens. We have to get rid of them and arrange their bodies properly before morning if we want to get away with this. Don't speak to me as if I'm an idiot, Olivia. Then stop acting like one. Two little children outwitting a grown man. Funny, I don't seem to see them in your clutches either. Oh, shut up! Wouldn't it be 
be a shame if something happened to you, dear sister. Your father. They locked him up down the basement. It's down the hallway down there. <gasps> Somebody's coming. Get back in there. Hurry up. You stay here. I'll go rescue your father. What have you gotten yourself into, Laura? Hold it. Well, well. Mrs. Griffith. The gang's all here, eh? Please let my family go. Sorry. No can do. Bernard? Bernard! What is it now? We have a new arrival. Well, aren't we the fashion plate? I've taken care of the pleasantries. Let's lock her up with the other one. Where's my husband? Oh, come with us. He's dying to see you. We should have jumped them. Yeah, and then we all would have been caught. No, we gotta do this sneaky-like. Yeah. So, what's your plan? I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. won't come out unless a crime has actually been committed, especially to the St. John estate. And probably not even then. They'd be afraid that we'd sue the pants off them for harassment. But it was a darn nice try. Nice try. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose we saw their rooms are. I, I think it's one of these. Why? Let's go say real pal. Now, Olivia tried to poison us, and I'm willing to bet that Cousin Bernie was the guy in the armor. Which means at the moment, his screams are probably off the record. Yeah. If I can only find the record, I've got an idea. Oh, cool. Good thinking, Josh. Enough for you? All right, cool. Let's find Bernie's room. Hey, maybe this is Bernie's room. Come on. Don't you think it's gonna look a little suspicious when an entire family disappears? She's right. Even the St. John family name won't be able to save you then. Oh no! Oh gosh. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to let you go. You won't tell anyone, will you? <laughs> Educate them, brother dear. Well, I was thinking. Since your car is already here, we could just stash your already dead bodies inside of it and run it off a cliff. Ridiculous. Forensics would find you out in a heartbeat. Tell that to my dearly departed cousin Edward. <gasps> Edward the First, the brat's father. He underestimated me too. Paid the ultimate price. Oh. 
all so you could be the sole inheritors. Can you think of a better reason? But then another heir showed up and, well, naturally, he has to be disposed of as well. Heir today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> That brat of yours had stayed home like you told him. Yeah. He did, and he'd be dead now. Well, true, but no matter. He'll all be out of the way soon enough. Keys hanging by the skeleton over there. Unlock us. Oh, hurry, Josh. These shackles are killing me. Hurry, hurry. Did I get it open? Oh, yes. You really are a hopeless fool. Shut up. By the way, how is it you had a key to my room? Oh, well, I. Never mind. We'll discuss that later. I don't feel like discussing it. Oh, there it goes. Oh, God. Help me, Josh. And like I'm not even here. Help it, Josh. I'm not worried. None of them. None of them work. Well, isn't this special? The whole family here to. Hey, how did she escape? You idiot. What do you mean, me? You're the one that locked her. No, I'm the one that locked her up. Oh! Who hit me? Nobody hit you. I'm telling you, someone kicked me. Now oh, get a grip, sis. The stress getting too much for you. Do not patronize me, you. Now, now, play nice, kids. How about if we start with you, you poor, helpless man? You better not. Yes, yeah, she's upstairs right now calling the cops. Get up there, Bernard. Stop her. Shoot her if you have to. Oh, shoot her if you don't have to. What about you? I'm going to make sure the little twerps stay here and behave themselves. When I get back, we'll get down to business. But he said to wait till he got back. Yes, but I don't see why he should have all the fun. Leave him 
him alone, you witch! You want to torture someone, torture me instead! Wait your turn, Griffin. Uh, 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 no. Olivia! Olivia! What is it now? Can't he kill one simple housewife? There's nothing simple about this, housewife lady. No! No! Don't you! Don't you! Oh, give me don't, these! Don't, don't you! Stay here! Boys, the key's behind me. Hurry, hurry. Burner, what is your problem? Telephone. Floating. In, and then... Chair. The, the gun was pointed at... It's a ghost! Get a hold of yourself. Come on, come on. Get it off, get it off. Oh. There is no such thing as ghosts. Then what was it? Her. Be, be, be careful. The housewife. Get a hold of yourself, you big sissy. Situation out of control. Why did you kill me? Oh my god, it's not Uncle Randolph, it's Edward's father. This is your fault. You're the one who killed him. On your orders? <laughs> it, it wasn't my fault, it was her idea. Mine, you traitor. Look, he's got it all wrong. It was an accident. We're really very sorry. Eternity? I don't think so. We'll be safe in here. Oh, you may be safe from the ghost, but you're not safe from me. Stop it! Stop it, all right? Look, we're in this together, all right? There must be a way out of here. Oh, yeah? So who did you kill? Our cousin Edward. I cut the brake lines on his car. And I told him to do it. Yeah. Take us away. Please. We can't stand this. I told you rich folks are nuts. Yeah, here's your proof. Will you two sign a confession? Anything, anything at all. Just get us out of here. Yeah, of course. She was the mastermind. I was only the helpless patsy. Shut up, Bernie. Bernard. Put him in the car. I'm going to get a statement from these folks. Nice, warm police car. You got the donuts or coffee? I'm hungry. <laughs> Carl. Honey. You're... Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Boy, are we glad to see you. How did you know where to come? Well, I brought them. Good evening. I'm Albert Preston, their late uncle's attorney. It's a real pleasure. So, you must be Eddie. How nice to finally meet you. Likewise, I guess. Huh. Do you need us to swear out a complaint against those two? Uh, not with them singing up a storm. Why don't you guys go home and get some rest? You about done in here? Those two out there keep going on about how the ghosts are haunting them. I think they're candidates for the bug house. Yeah, I think we're done. You said you're the family lawyer. You probably want to come down to the station. Oh, not necessarily. Uh, it couldn't happen to a more deserving pair, if you ask me. Good night, officers. Good night. I handled all of your late grandfather's business affairs. You're quite a rich young man. You'll need some financial guidance. 
I'd be more than happy to continue on in your employ. Yeah, sure. Whatever. What's the matter, Eddie? This is a great opportunity. I guess. I mean, I have to live in this big house all by myself. Josh can't live here, because he's got his own family, his own home, and his own mom. I will always be here for you. You guys can get together whenever you want. Really? You mean it? Cool. Well, hold on now. Did I say you were going to be living here all by yourself? Not on your life. You're going to have an adult here with you night and day, seven days a week. Oh, terrific. Uh, let me introduce you to your new guardian. Mason told me about you. Thank you for taking such good care of my son. He's a good kid. You know, um, I'm a little confused. It might not be any of my business, but where have you been all these years? In hiding. You see, after Eddie's father died, thanks to his cousins, though I couldn't prove it, I knew they'd come after us to finish the job and wipe out any inheritors. There I was, alone and penniless. I know I couldn't keep Eddie safe unless I put him away in hiding. So I went to the orphanage and I changed his last name. And I prayed that Bernard and Olivia would never find him. And when they made such a big deal out of adopting him after Randolph St. John passed away, I knew it was just a matter of time before Eddie met up with a quote, unquote, unfortunate accident. When I heard about Randolph passing away, I knew it was time to surface. I tracked down Mr. Preston, and here I am. Eddie, I'm sorry it took so long. Can you ever forgive me? You're my mom. Well, I guess that settles it. We have papers to sign, but that can wait for a day or so. I think there's more important things to take care of right now. Good night, all. Good night. Oh, wow. <laughs> about you, honey? Are you OK? Oh, I'm fine. I think the serum is finally worn off. You know, I, I kind of like this wraparound look. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Here, let's go home and let them get acquainted. <laughs> if we're all here, who's playing the piano?